Welcome to the burning of the midnight amp, where we are dissecting music history, album by album, and track by track. The track we are discussing today is The Last Thing You Should Do, track number seven on David Bowie's Earthling album from 1997. It's a track written by David Bowie, Reeves Cabrels, and Mark Platy. And we will, as usual, start by listening to it, and then we'll discuss it afterwards.
you should do is to put this song on the album. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a question? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was mm. the last thing they did. It was indeed. <laughs> okay. Because the album was uh, uh, sent to mastering and then they, oh, had recorded this um, stroke of genius that they just had to put on the album. Who, who they sc scrapped. Uh, sorry, but who said uh, stroke of genius? I said it in an ironic voice. Oh, probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they removed the cover version of himself, um, a Tin Machine song called I Can't Read. And Baby Universal. They yeah. removed both. They removed both. Okay. Yeah, so Both of them. Uh, yeah. The two Tin Machine songs had been recorded. Uh, the album had been sent to mastering, and this was the very last session for Earthling <coughs> in November 1996. And they had uh, lots of uh, bits and pieces that they put together to this uh, song. That mm. Basically leftover scraps. <laughs> and uh, it was intended to be a B-side uh, after it was written. So very quickly, it was all done in a day. Bowie wrote the lyrics, recorded it in about 20 minutes. Yeah, the next day, Bowie came into the studio and had uh, changed his mind to plot his dismay because he really wants I Can't Read on, on, uh, on the album new recorded version mm -hmm. Bowie argued it would make the album more cohesive and according to Gabrals it was him who pressed to get the song to replace the two Tin Machine songs um, Bowie agreed with him and uh, argued that it turned Earthling into a cohesive nine song statement instead of a ten song pastiche yeah well we can mm. discuss if this was mm. the right uh, decision um, but uh, I mean, what do you think about the song? Uh, it's, uh, well, you said it, it was meant for a B-side. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it sounds maybe like a B-side. Uh, no, it, it's a g it, I think it's a good track, but it should stop after two and a half minutes or so. But it, it just goes on and on until almost five minutes. Um, because it's a great opening and uh, I like the vocals. Um, the lyrics are very short but uh, interesting uh, and the great power in the chorus and after two minutes there's some really Nine Inch Nails like noise uh, coming after the chorus uh, that's really cool um, but after that it, it, you know they just extend it and extend it and put all their, their scraps <laughs> upon it or mm. I don't know what it uh, uh, how it came about, but I think it's at least uh, fifty percent too long. So I'm 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 not saying that they should uh, have removed this and and kept the two others instead. But uh, as th this is, I think it's too long, so it grows boring. I don't necessarily think it is too long, uh, but it it's just not a very good song. I would say. Yeah, I also say the same. It's a B-side at best. Mm. And yeah, every time I, I look at that title, I'm just, what song is that? Because <laughs> uh, I never remember it until I, I hear the, to me, slightly annoying <laughs> vocal line that Bowie, Bowie has in here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Definitely something they could have left off. I don't know what the nine inch nails thing. There is also some kind of synth arpeggiated stuff in there that seems like it's uh, chopped up mm. Kraftwerk kind of things. Uh, it's a bit interesting, mm. but all in all, it uh, gives me another this kind of just fatigue. I just want to get out of this. <laughs> yeah. No, no the, the, the verses aren't particularly interesting. It doesn't really have a chorus, at least not um, mm. uh, with vocals, except for the yeah. <laughs> it comes very aggressive <laughs> guitar. Uh, probably yeah, it can be a chorus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably uh, one of Bowie's most aggressive uh, musical parts might be if, in, in terms of that type of aggressive mm. guitar playing. It, it's very industrial and. Maybe that's why I thought about Nine Inch Nails in that. Yeah. You get mm. these on, on top of that. 
But it doesn't come back the last time when you sort of expect it to come back. Then it's just quiets down, it silts. Mm. That part itself is not too bad. Uh, it actually reminds me of something that could have been on, on the outside, for example. Mm. Gives a little bit outside vibes. Um, but yeah, but overall, not, not, uh, not uh, the best moment on the, on, on, the, on the album. And probably it's a contender together with Law for me in terms of the songs that I've listened to the least on this, uh, on this album. Mm. Yeah, I think most will agree with you on that. Those are the two tracks that uh, get less, less love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I actually think this album is close to being one of Bowie's masterpieces, but uh, there are uh, two or three songs that kind of pulls everything down. The, uh, the average of the album leaves it a little bit, um, it, it, pulls them, it pulls it down, yeah, but it mm. has some really terrific highlights. Mm. The song itself was actually mostly written by Platy and Gabrals, Bowie contributed with the uh, synth line that we hear over the chorus, if you like. This falling, it, it sounds very displaced. It, it sounds like it doesn't belong in there, but it makes it quite interesting. This quite, mm. yeah, mm. humorous falling, yeah. falling synth. And that's something that he had used multiple times in the past. He used it on Laughing Gnome. He used it on Speed of Life and he used it on Beat of Your Drum. All of them are exactly 10 years apart, so in 67, 77, 87, and 97. He Maybe. used that synth line. <laughs> Maybe he had a structure scheme in his head. Uh, I have to put one of these on the album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tris O'Leary actually called it a miniature version of the other tracks on the album. Mm. Yeah, well... Another Bowie biographer called Peroni, he argues that the song is more successful as a standalone track in the context of the album. Yeah. Uh, He's right to his opinions. <laughs> yep, he is. Uh, well, it, 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 uh, it flows very well from the ending of this until the opening of I'm Afraid of Americans. That I can say. Mm. From the year and to the... Yeah. It ends good. <laughs> The it last year. Good. <laughs> it's yeah. quite cool. Uh, Boy performed the song a couple of times live, 42 times in total, uh, including one time as the Tau Jones Index on the Phoenix Festival. Um, he played it on the 50th birthday concert uh, together with Robert Smith from The Cure. Mm. That's quite a strange question. Well, songs you would put Robert Smith on was, is this, is it? <laughs> yeah. And that's the last thing you should do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what they thought. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't have much more to add to it. it it's uh, it has a B B side feeling to it. Made at the very end of the whole process. It doesn't quite stick up to the rest of the album. Most of the rest of the album at least. Mm. Yeah. But after this, the last written song for the album comes the first written song for the album yeah. I'm Afraid of Americans we will head into that in a couple of days if you have any comments about this song any views uh, if you like it more than we do please uh, let uh, leave us a comment below we also have a podcast where we are discussing this album and other albums uh, we have a Patreon where you can get early access to all the songs from this album and future albums that will be want to support us you can head over there and then it's only for us to say goodbye and have a nice day goodbye see you very soon <laughs>